All right, welcome back everyone to another TypeScript data structures lesson. In the last lesson, we discussed how to build a stack. Stacks are typically taught side by side with their counterpart, which is the queue. A queue is similar to a stack in the sense of insertions and deletions are the main operations. The difference is in the way data enters and leaves the structure. In the stack lesson, we talked about how inserts and removals happen on the same end, otherwise known as last in, first out. Or rather, the last item added to a stack is the first item to leave the stack. Queues follow a first in, first out principle, where inserts and deletions happen on different ends. While a stack is similar to a blank CD spindle, a queue can be understood as a line in the grocery store. The first person who enters the line is the first person to check out. For the next person to check out, they have to wait for the first person to finish checking out. There are a few different ways to build queues using TypeScript. One way is to use a stack. Another way is to use linked lists. But for our lesson today, we're going to build a queue using arrays. All right, for starters, let's implement our queue class. Our queue class is going to have a single private attribute called data. And this is going to be an array of type any. This means that anything can go in our queue, doesn't matter the type of data. Next, in our constructor, we're going to have a parameter called queue. And this is going to be an array of type any. But we're also going to give it a default value, setting it to an empty array in the case that a user doesn't uh, input anything to start with. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this.data is equal to queue. This means that whatever data the user provides in their construct in, when they create the queue will be added. Otherwise, an empty array will be added. Now that we have our class, we can build our in queue, our size, and our dequeue functions. The first function we're going to implement is in queue. If you've watched the lesson on stacks already, then this function is going to look pretty familiar to you, since it's identical to our stack push function. When using arrays to create queues, the push and in queue functions are the same. The difference comes when we remove items. So we're going to create a function called in queue. And we're going to give it a parameter called value, which can take in anything. And, we're, and our function is not going to return anything. All that we have to do now is this.data.push value. Just like that. Let's also write our size function, which will be similar to our stack size function we built last time, since we're using arrays for both. We'll create our function called size, and it'll return a number. Then all we have to do is do return this dot data dot length. Pretty simple. Since our queue implementation is a little different than our stack implementation, we don't need to check if the queue is null. That's because we are setting the value of our private data attribute to an empty array in the constructor, meaning that no matter what, we'll always have an empty array and not a null or undefined variable. Now we are going to use our size function in our dq function. Now that we have our in queue and size functions, let's write our dq function, which allows us to remove data from the front of the line and return it. Since we're using arrays for our queue, we have access to another JavaScript array function called shift. Shift, shift takes the first value out of an array and removes it, and then automatically scales the array down so that the old second item is now the first item, and so on. We're going to check if there are any elements in our array first. So we'll create a function called any or called dq that returns type any. And then what we want to do is check if the size of our array is less than one. If it is, we want to throw a new error saying empty q. This lets us make sure that we're not trying to shift an empty q. Otherwise, we want to return this.data.shift. Now that we have our in queue and dq functions, we can do our first test. Sticking with the grocery line example from earlier, let's create a new queue called grocery line. So we'll come down here, we'll create a new variable called grocery line. And we're going to make it a new queue. And we're also going to use the constructor. We're going to have a object that has a couple things in it. First, it's going to have the name of the customer. And then it's going to have an items array that includes which items they're buying. So we have a customer called John, and he's buying apples and oranges. 
Then let's make a new customer called Elizabeth. And she's buying carrots and burgers. Just like that. Now let's add another person into our queue using the in queue function. So we'll call grocery line dot in queue and add a new person named San with the items, potato, corn, and chicken. Now that we have people in our line, let's call DQ and log out what response we get. So we'll console.log, and then we will DQ our grocery line. All right, and now we can run this. and see what happens. All right, so since John was the first person in line, he's the first person to leave the line. Just like with our stack lesson, we also want a way to look at the first item in our queue without having to remove it. So we'll want to write a peak function for our queue as well. Our peak function is pretty simple. It's going to return anything First, we'll check if the queue is empty. If it is, we'll throw an error. And then if it's not empty, let's return the front of the queue. So we have peak, and then we're gonna do the same thing that we did in our DQ function and check the size. If the size is less than one, we're gonna throw the same error that we threw there, empty queue. And then otherwise, we'll return this.data zero. So this will return the first thing in our array, or our, in our queue. So let's take a look at this in action. We'll come down here. Let's log out our grocery line. We should get Elizabeth. Yep, Elizabeth is now the first person in our line. Now that we have the basics of our queue, let's look at it in action. We're going to write a simple grocery store checkout function that removes items from a queue and logs out each customer's name and their purchases. So we're going to build a new function outside of our queue called grocery store checkout. And this is going to take in a line parameter, which is a queue. And we're not going to return anything since we're just logging things out. What we want to do is first do a while loop and check the size of the queue. And while it is greater than zero, we are going to dequeue each customer. And then we're going to log out the customer's name. And items. Pretty simple. So if you're unfamiliar with this notation using these um, apostrophes, this is actually called string interpolation. So what this allows us to do is con construct strings with both variables and static text. All right, so let's come down here. Let's remove our DQ so that John is still in our um, queue. And then we'll run grocery store checkout on our grocery line. Let's see what happens. All right. So you can see we have each person who's in our line and what they're checking out with. Just like a stack, one of the primary benefits of a queue is its simplicity. Simple data structures are easier to make, easier to build on top of, and easier to maintain in the long run. One common use case for a queue is task scheduling. Queues are used to manage the order in which requests come in so that operations happen in the right order as they leave the queue. Music or video software often use queues to handle playlists. Another type of queue that is commonly used is a priority queue. Priority queues are similar to queues, except that priorities are assigned to each item as it enters the queue. Higher priority elements are the first to be removed. Think of priority queues like different types of boarding and leaving lines on an airplane. 
Elderly and handicapped people are given higher priority so that they may board and leave the airplane first. We will cover the implementation of priority queues in a future video. Well, that concludes today's lesson on queues. I hope this information is helpful. Leave a comment if there's any topic you'd like to see me cover, and don't forget to subscribe and have a great day, everybody.